Now our partners from our DNAinfo.com, our columnist and criminal justice editor, Murray Weiss, is here. And we should tell you that Murray broke the story about investigators' belief that the conductor had perhaps fallen asleep moments before the derailment. Good to have you with us, Murray. Thanks for um, me. Okay, so the uh, conductor told the investigators that he was in some sort of a daze right before it happened. What do you know about the differentials as far as the different accounts? Well, they came to the conclusion pretty rapidly that he had dozed that he dozed off asleep. Uh, within uh, minutes, really, of the crash, uh, hundreds of first responders came to the scene of the crash, paramedics. Some of them actually responded to assist him, but so did a cadre of investigators who were, whose job it was to immediately try to lock down statements in people and find out what had occurred. Um, are you sharing any of this information that you have? I mean, I understand you broke the story, but are you being interviewed at all by the NTSB or any of that sort of thing? No, actually, no. it's in reverse. Okay. Uh, the information I got uh, wasn't uh, information that I got on my own. Okay. This is information that I've obtained from people who are intimate with uh, the statements that the engineer mm -hmm. made, Mr. Rockefeller. Okay. There's a lot of information, obviously. I mean, there's tremendous data, there's video and so forth. Basically, talk about the investigation, how it gets off the ground, and what they have to go through, because a lot of it is still undetermined. Well, from ground zero, the, the, the first thing they had to do was try to talk to him to find out what he knew, what he was saying, what his impression was, what, what his state of mind was mm -hmm. uh, while he was driving the train in the moments before the crash, and, and, and uh, and what he thought happened and what they gleaned from him led them to believe that he probably fell asleep. Secondarily, in the 24 hours after that, the investigators led by the NTSB, they got all the scientific data, the, the uh, black box, which they downloaded and then began to listen to and analyze that. And that began to paint a picture of the train traveling through a 70 mile uh, zone and then speeding up to 82 and then it had entered the curve it's the sharpest curve actually in uh -huh. the metro north uh, ride right. um, the train at that point the motorman hit the brake which is what he said he did but obviously it was five seconds before the actual train derailed and from that's the a 30 mile per hour curve that you're talking about. right so yes. by that point he was traveling almost three times the speed limit uh -huh. and there was no way that the brakes were going to stop the train you know something else that was revealed in the presser just a few moments ago was this uh, dead man switch um, that is on the left side, apparently, mm -hmm. underneath the conductor's foot. Uh, I don't know if there are any indications or if he even said to investigators whether or not he tried to step on it or not. Do we have any idea? No. What, what, uh, I'm not a train expert, but the right, way right, I right. believe it works is if the switch is down, then the train is, is at full throttle and open. And apparently that was the case. So they believe if he dozed off, his foot was still on it. And heading down through the 70-mile-an-hour stretch, the train picked up speed. The rumble of it as it went into the curve is what probably awakened him, and he hit the brake, but of course too late. Right. Well, we continue to follow the investigation, obviously ongoing. Murray Weiss, uh, DNAinfo.com, as always, thanks for joining us today and for your information. My pleasure.